Bantu societies had little to no government. The Bantu people governed themselves through family and kinship groups. The male head of the family decided the public affairs for the entire group and the most prominent of the family heads presided over the village as a chief. Village chiefs negotiated on matters with other villages. In 1000 CE, Kinbei societies faced difficult challenges which encouraged Bantu communities to organize military forces and encouraged the development of more formal structures of government. Chiefs imposed their own authority on their territories and some of these consolidated their lands into small kingdoms. Beneath the central government, there were six provinces administered by governors, each of whom supervised several districts administered by subordinate officials. Within the districts, villages ruled by chiefs provided local governments. Though not the only kingdom in sub-Saharan Africa, Congo was perhaps the most tightly centralized of the early Bantu kingdoms. In most cases, the king or other central administrators could appoint or replace local officials at will, and the central government maintained a royal currency system based on cowries, seashells that came from the Indian Ocean. Dianto's grandnephew Mansa Musa ruled Mali from 1312 to 1337 during the high point of the empire. He observed Islamic tradition by making his pilgrimage to Mecca. Musa built mosques, particularly in trading cities, frequently visited by Muslim merchants, and he sent students to study with distinguished Islamic scholars in North Africa. He also established religious schools to make Islam better known in Africa. African society, there were clearly defined classes. The ruling elites, military nobles, administrative officials, Bow. clergy, wealthy merchants, artisans, business entrepreneurs, common people, and slaves. Workers with special skills were mostly men. Women tended to domestic affairs and caring for children. Due to the great prominence and influence women had in their family kinship groups, they had influence over public affairs within their society. Women traded in markets and conducted, in, conducted independent long-distance trade. They also engaged in combat and organized all female military units. After the arrival of Islam, influence of women continued as it had been just in the past. Women could discuss freely with other men and continue to work in society in ways not permitted in other Islamic societies. Apart from kinship and expectations based on gender roles, African society attributed roles and jobs to people of different age grades. The arrival of the camel quickened the pace of communication and transportation across the Sahara. Islamic merchants established commercial relations with societies. Sub-Saharan West Africa, they established trading centers such as Gao, which was a flourishing market for copper, salt, grains, and cotton textiles. Ghana became the center for trade in gold, which was in high demand. Ghana itself did not produce gold, but kings produced nuggets from Niger, Gambia, and Sengo rivers. Travelers' reports and recent archaeological discoveries have thrown an especially clear light on the development of Kilwa, one of the busiest city-states on the East African coast. During the next two centuries, they imported pottery and stoneware from other regions in East Africa and began to rely more on agriculture to support their growing The Swahili numbers. dominated the East African coast from Mogadishu in the north to Kilwa, the Comoro Islands, and Sofala in the south. They spoke Swahili, a Bantu language supplemented with words and ideas borrowed from Arabic. Swahili peoples developed different dialects, but they communicated readily among themselves because individuals frequently visited other Swahili communities in their ocean-going craft. Indeed, all along the East African coast, Swahili society underwent similar patterns of development with respect to language, religion, architecture, and technology. African peoples had held monotheistic beliefs, but also recognized lesser gods and spirits associated with the sun, rain, and natural phenomena. Much of Africa, African rituals were based on honoring of deities, spirits, or ancestor souls. Christianity reached Egypt and North Africa during the first century CE, soon after the faith's appearance, as it attracted converts throughout the Mediterranean basin. Alexandria and Egypt became one of the most prominent centers of early Christian thought, and North Africa was the home of St. Augustine, among many other leaders of the fledging church. 
About the middle of the 4th century CE, Christianity established a foothold in the Kingdom of Aksum, located in the highlands of modern Ethiopia. As missionaries visited Ethiopia, the kings of Aksum also converted to Christianity, possibly in hopes of improving relations with their powerful neighbors to the north in the Christian power Egypt. Of Jesus. Islam. No, Jesus. Islam. Allah is the real God. Jesus no. is real. Inshallah, Allah. Jesus.